<clears throat> I love me some bacon fried hominy. Welcome to the Four Seasons. I'm your host, Ken Johnson. Today, we're going to be doing a bacon fried hominy. So, if you've never had that, I think that you would like that. Um, now, what is bacon fried hominy? All right. So, as I'll talk about in this video, uh, it's something that it, it's hominy is a type of corn. I'll explain all that. And then I, I fry out some bacon, fry some other stuff in it, and then I make this cohesive dish. It is a perfect dish to do at Thanksgiving. And you'll find out why. So definitely, I would think that you could definitely do, um, take you about three pounds of bacon. And I would say, I would say just double everything, double the recipe that I'm given um, here, because this normal recipe will do, if you treat it as a side dish, it'll do four to six people as a side dish. And if you got a big get together or whatever, that's where you do three, three pounds of bacon, double everything, and obviously it would be more. But I think you'll like some of the history about it, some little bit of the science behind it, um, it's got a neat story. It's something that my wife and I, we love. Um, I don't fix it a lot because it, it isn't the most healthy thing in the world, but it's a festive meal. It is something when you're wanting something that's comforting or you want something that is nourishing or anything of that nature. It's a special meal. Um, we eat it as a meal by itself. So like for me, Half that amount was one big giant bowl that I ate by myself. I'm a big boy, um, but definitely as a, as a side dish, people normally get a spoonful or two, big spoonful, and so therefore you can feed a lot more people with it. And that's what I would intend it to be for at a Thanksgiving meal. Somebody just getting a little something that you may not have ever had before that's in keeping with our heritage and history as a country and a nation. So with that, Watch how I make this bacon fried hominy. Okay, so this is going to be a dish that we um, make in my tribe. Me, people in my tribe make it. Uh, it's just um, basically fried hominy. So I'm not doing the whole traditional make the hominy myself. I'm going to do a shortcut. So I'm using a combination of gold hominy which is just yellow corn and then I've got some white hominy here that's on. Uh, so if you don't know what hominy is basically all it is you take uh, field corn you soak it in lime water overnight and then you take the skins off and it makes this type of corn that is more nutrient accessible to your body than just regular corn because you have all these protein structures and so it's called nixification. Um, I've talked about it before in, um, my, on my channel. Now to what I'm going to fry this in is some um, bacon and so this right here is a rasher of bacon roughly about a pound and a half so I'm going to have that bacon there and then um, I'm going to do little lardons. You'll see that where I, I cut them in little bee lardons and fry them out. Then after that, um, I fry this. This is pepper and onion medley. Um, most people in my tribe, they just do the peppers and onions. But I find this is cheaper and easier, so I, I take a shortcut. Um, and I'll show you the rest in a minute. So... The first thing we're going to be doing is just frying out this bacon and it's I've got the heat on slowly cooking it down um, I'll show you when it's all slowly starting to cook more 
But I did want to talk a little bit about this dish. Okay, so obviously we did not, the, the Native Americans, uh, my, my people are Cherokee, but there's different tribes, of course. Uh, we didn't have pork until the Unega came, which is what we call the Europeans. Um, so what we did is we had um, items like um, possum. Possum, the original word for possum was sequa. Um, and then when the Europeans, namely the Spanish, brought pork, we liked it so much that we started calling um, pigs sequa. So um, if you ever heard the, the chief, or not really a chief, but you've heard of sequoia, uh, well, sequoia means pigfoot. Um, so by that time we had already used sequa exclusively for pigs, and so sequoia means pigfoot. Um, but we started adopting into the European culture very quickly. There was a great death in America from about 1600s to the, I would say the 1740. Uh, really from 1690 to 1740, the Cherokee we lost over half our population just to illnesses and war with the Onega. And so we were one of the first ones to adopt the European ways of cooking and eating and things of that nature. By the time that we were removed from our lands um, in the 1800s, we had already pretty much assimilated into um, white culture. And so we had plantations, we had businesses, we were no different than anybody else other than the fact that we had a ethnicity that was different. And it was because our ethnicity that we was forced to move. Um, this dish here, starting around the late 1700s, early 1800s, became more and more popular. So definitely by the 1800s, this would have been a common dish amongst my people. Uh, before then, you would have something that most historians refer to as succotash. Succotash is um, not our word for it, but um, basically it is a stew made with beans, corn, and pumpkin. Um, Beans are uh, tuya, corn, which corn we're talking about here would be hominy, is selu, and pumpkin is iya, or any type of squash is actually iya. So we we ate that almost every day, so there wasn't like a dish, succotash, but that's what the historians like to make up and say. But we did eat it every day. Um, this right here just celebrates celery with corn. And then it has some seasonings added to it. So as you can see, this right here is being cooked down. I'll show you when it's being fully cooked. I do want to say that you need to take your time with this step here. Um, you don't want to rush it. You don't want to burn your bacon, so you want to render out the fat and get it to where it's nice and crispy. So this this is the longest part of the whole recipe, and you'll get little bits on the bottom. You want to keep that from burning. Just get those little bits right there up um, where the Maillard reaction is taking place. But yeah, if you're going to do something for Thanksgiving that's a little bit different, a little bit special. This is a fantastic quick dish that you can do as a side. Most people never had hominy in America. Um, southerners would probably know what hominy is. Even a number of southerners no longer eat hominy. And it's a really good dish. I really, really love it. And you can grow this out or reduce it or 
to whatever it's all to feel and what you like. So I'm gonna continue trying this out. Um, it's right now at the halfway stage. Uh, this is about as good as I like my bacon to gum when I'm eating regular bacon. I, I don't like crisp bacon. But when I'm doing fried dishes and things of that nature, crispy bacon is the option. But if I just want to eat bacon on its own, this is what I can serve it to cook. Once it gets to this stage where Maillard reaction is starting to take place, which I've never heard of Maillard reaction, that is browning. So where it's starting to brown a little bit on the edges, reduce your heat down a little bit. Um, you don't want this to burn, so take your time. Low and slow is going to be a, a lot better. So I, mine is an electric stove. I went from being at high setting to now I'm at a six, so almost um, medium level on my uh, electric stove. And so this is this is still hot enough to fry it out, but it's not burning. And you see how it's going, that browning is taking place right in front of your eyes, so it, it happens very quickly. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that step. Okay, you can see here it is all browned, beautiful. Now the, the oil is all foamy. Um, that, that is part of the process. It'll start foaming up a lot more once everything is at the right temp and everything's going good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this bacon because it's nice and crispy. I'm going to put it on a plate with a bunch of paper towels like this. And once I put them on there, then we'll go on with the next step. Now I'm going to save all this oil to cook in. Okay, so this right here is a Hungarian wax fruit. It's a hot pepper. I'm going to chop this up and put it in the oil. Um, but before I chop it up in the oil, I'm going to put this, the pepper blend, pepper and onion blend, in the oil. And so I'm going to be frying that out. So I'm just cutting this up and adding this in. I've added the other end. So it's just going to be some extra level of heat. Um, nothing too much, but definitely a little bit of flavor. So, do that. Alright, I had to bring up my oil temp back up to high because this was frozen and so it needs to cook out a little bit. While that's happening, I'm going to take my Omni, I'm going to open up the can, and I'm going to put them over a strainer and rinse them off good and get them nice and um, get all that starch off of them. Alright, so you can see, probably can't see the oil has changed colors due to all the red and yellow peppers and all that, but it is now a vibrant yellow hue. And the onions are starting to become translucent and browning on the edges. Uh, so with that, what we'll do is we'll add in the um, Omni in just a minute. So I'll show you that. Okay, we're adding in the Omni now. We'll stir this in and let it fry out. It's already cooked, so really you're not frying it out too much. You're just kind of warming it through and letting some of the flavors absorb into the corn. Right about now is when I like to use the peppercorn medley. It's um, white peppercorn, pink peppercorn, allspice, coriander. It's just something I like. It's got good flavor. It mimics a little bit of some of the original cooking herbs that we used to use. Um, so I'm just going to add some of that in there. Probably can't see it, but the the hominy, people would say celery, um, which that's what it is, but um, the hominy is not, it, it's turning almost translucent like an onion would. So once it gets to this stage of translucency, 
that's when I like to add in my bacon. Bacon going in now. Okay. The last step, I like to add about a quarter to a half cup of water to this. That kind of makes the sauce where everything that's been cooked out in the oil it makes it nice and cohesive because we, we've mostly fried out in the oil now. Now we need to get some of that starchiness going on here. Turn off the heat. Get it going. And that's time to serve. There you go. Fried hominy. It is a very tasty meal. Um, it's a good meal to have, uh, especially on a cold day like today. Uh, it's something historic that you can serve for any Thanksgiving meal that you wish. Uh, really, I like to have it any time of the year. But it's nourishing. Very good. At any rate, if you like content, go ahead and give a thumbs up. Um, make a comment down below if you've tried this or something similar to it or if you've had hominy. Or if you know of any other historic dishes you'd like for me to try, we can definitely do that. Um, if you haven't already subscribed and hit that notification bell so you can be alerted to future content, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.